Self awareness, and I'm Alison, the interpreter. Uh, just think, quick, quick things to remember. You watch my lips all the time. I means I can watch your lips if you ask a question. Always speak face to face with a deaf person. Uh, it's very difficult, but try not to watch the interpreter because the, the interpreter's here just for my voice. And if you could speak uh, clearly, uh, clear, clear lip pattern, that would be great. And then please feel free to ask any questions later on, if hopefully if we've got time now. <laughs> so a little bit about me, I was born deaf. And I was in, uh, born deaf into a hearing family and I went to an oral school for the deaf. <coughs> I learned sign language for, uh, later on in life, so I've not relied on sign language. I worked as a typist for many years. Uh, after being made redundant, I wanted to change my career, and so I, I wanted something else to do, so I then launched Support the Deaf People. So I set up Support the Deaf People around about 2010, and graduated from University, uh, University of Bolton in July of 2015. Now I'm a qualified uh, teacher. Uh, I've uh, just be I've just been uh, nominated and runner-up for outstanding contribution to deaf services, so I'm uh, very proud of that. So why I think uh, deaf awareness is important in hotels? Uh, I've had experiences myself, and uh, there was a fire alarm that went on in the in the room that I was staying in in a hotel. The fire alarm was making sound, but the, I didn't know anything until a fireman came in my room. Uh, I was uh, obviously a bit shocked by that. I didn't hear any, obviously I wouldn't hear a fire alarm and I had no flashing lights either. Um, and they had no offer of vibrating pads in the room either. There's been roughly over, well more, two and a half thousand fires in hotels since 2009. So um, obviously that's quite a crucial number of, of fires. So really there's... In terms of myths of deaf people, many deaf people or hearing people think that deaf people can't read or write English. Um, sign language is not the same all over the country and again it's not the same all over the world. So we ask you not to presume that all deaf people can lip read. So um, if you look at lip patterns, if you say it to each other, Matt, Bat and Bat, if you say it to each other, see if you can identify which other word. So lip reading isn't very simple because your lip patterns are the same. You won't be able to tell the difference. So really, within the training that I provide, it will teach you how to communicate effectively, you know, not thinking and relying that that deaf person will rely on lip speaking. I also teach sign language. So I'm able to teach you how to say, hello, welcome to the hotel, can I help you? Um, also, the most important thing is equipment in your hotels. Ideally, flashing lights um, on, on the fire alarm equipment. I've got them demonstrated. I can show you at my stand if you wanted to come and find some more information uh, about the equipment that we offer. So, do you have in your hotel, do you have much equipment? You know, que question the staff, see what they know about uh, the, inf the equipment. A lot of hotels we've been in will say we don't really know what it is. They need to know that they have to check the batteries and things like that. So make sure it's, uh, it's in use. Ideally, you've had a fire alarm with a flashing light, doorbells, and also um, flashing light alarms as well. So you might already provide a vibrating pad, which is fine, but that guest might go into the bedroom or the, uh, the, into the bathroom and they can't feel the vibration on the bed. So if they're in the bath and the fire breaks out, they're never going to know about it. So, yeah, in the event of a fire, how would a deaf person hear a fire alarm going off? They would sleep right through a fire alarm. So it's, it's crucial that you consider the right equipment. So if you have a fire alarm with a, with a light, it will instantly wake us up. Because it's a bright light. So room service. How would a deaf person hear, hear anybody knock on the door? <coughs> you know, I've, I've had situations where a housekeeper's been knocking on the door and obviously I can't hear and they've entered my room. It's embarrassing for both parties. Um, I've had room service being delivered and then left outside. 
you know, I've been waiting for my food to arrive, but I've opened the door wondering where they were and they've left the food on the floor. So there's very, very, very simple things that you can do to avoid that. The same with the housekeeping. You know, I was in the bathroom, a lady came in to clean the room, make the beds, and there was a shock from both of us. You know, I had to explain to then I was deaf and she was very embarrassed and, you know, it's a difficult situation. She, she, I explain, explained to her, it's fine to carry on doing what you're doing, but it was a, you know, we want to avoid that embarrassment. Ideally, she would have known that I was deaf and, and been able to communicate effectively. So a wake-up call, like anybody else, we want to be able to wake up. Normally the phone would ring, but obviously I wouldn't uh, hear that. Uh, one time I went to reception and asked for a wake-up call at 7 o'clock in the morning. And she says, yeah, no problem, 7 o'clock in the morning. So I went to bed. So I was a little bit overslept, but I, I woke up. Uh, obviously the receptionist had been banging on the door and I wouldn't hear it. Uh, so then apparently she, well, she wrote on a piece of paper saying wake up call and she shoved it under the door. So, <coughs> so obviously I got ready and I was like, well, what's this bit of paper? <laughs> wake up call, seven o'clock, that's not gonna, it's no good for anybody, I'm deaf. So I had to rush and as explained to the receptionist, you know, I, you knew I was deaf. They didn't know, never thought about it, didn't know what to do. So we find that lots of deaf people are frustrated with, with, with hotels and other businesses. You know, there's no, there's no facilities there for deaf people or at least staff members aren't able to communicate or have the confidence to communicate. So I find that the training is really important for all hotels around the UK and, you know, are wanting to give you the information today so you can go away uh, and have a look at the course and, and, and encourage your staff members to consider it. The PEP forms for deaf people. Uh, I know these are sort of policy to hand out and lots of, um, lots of the information on there is very high level English. It can be very confusing for deaf people, especially if English isn't their first language. If they use BSL as their first language, they're not going to understand some of the details on this form. So ideally you would make it a lot clearer. Uh, for deaf yeah. people, maybe have a separate one for disabled people, a physical disabled, and pe one for deaf. So we know that obviously disabled people need, you know, grab rails or wheelchair access, but there might be only two questions on there for deaf people. But most of it says, would you need us to access the room in case of a, vi a fire alarm, or do you want a vibrating pad? And that's it. But it's it's not much else really. Ideally. Deaf people will just sign it because they don't really know what it is. Uh, but I, we understand it's a policy thing that you have to do, but I think you need to maybe consider making it a little bit easier. So obviously if I'm running a course at your hotel, I, I'm quite happy to advise you on how to make that much more deaf friendly to, to be able to be understood. Uh, many hotels we go to, they just do not make any sense to the deaf community. So involved in the course, so I, I demonstrate. <laughs> if we could flip back. So on the course, I could demonstrate the equipment, but we have 15 to 20 delegates I, I can have on the course. Um, all the delegates have a, get a handout on the day covering all the information that what, what's been covered on the day. Ideally, I'd recommend you'd have two members of staff from each department. So two from reception to the gym, from the bar. Um, we understand that you know the shifts happen morning and afternoon. You know, if you had one staff member being taught, then that person might go home, and then nobody knows on that in that particular shift. So you know, the more the merrier. But ideally, at least two from each area within the hotel. So they'll learn about more about deaf culture, communication, specialist equipment, and like they signs that are relevant to the hotel industry. So there's quite a lot covered on the course and it, you know, it's quite important and um, you know, I would not, can only encourage you to consider it within your hotel because you know, a lot of feedback I've received from other hotels has been fantastic and how they now communicate with deaf people, they've got much more confidence than they had before.
spelling. So finger spelling. So basically we have the we use our fingers to do that. So it's the ABC. So we, we can teach you all of this um, on the course as well. So this is an example of the, the booklet that everybody will receive. And those are the pictures of the language of the signs that everybody uses and that I teach as well. And many of them are hotel relevant, like your teas and coffees and room service and so it's a full day where they'll be learning uh, lots lots of things there's lots of activities lots of interaction we do a lip, lips reading activity uh, so it's it's really informative and lots of people are interested in learning as well so if you want to have a little go of how you sign your name so it's like a little salute so your name. So <laughs> these ladies over here seem to. <laughs> oh, you have aims. You have a sign name. Well done. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> Scotland. Good afternoon, Scotland. Very good. Yes. <laughs> good and good. Uh, good afternoon, England. This is a sign for England. <laughs> Yeah, so good afternoon England or good afternoon in Scotland, good afternoon Wales, Wales, yeah, like the dragon, <laughs> yeah, so you learn something every day, there you go, so that's a good, that's it, you've learned something very simple, so you can say, thank you for, <laughs> for, for teaching us that and involving us. So we've just we've, we have literally rushed through. Now I've not right. not took a breath of air yet. <laughs> so that's it. Woo! <laughs> I'm hoping maybe the next one will get more people interested in that. Uh, you never know. You never know. Spread the word. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's uh, lots of people, d hotels, just, they just don't realise, they think, you know, we, we spend our days phoning every hotel around the UK and they'll go, oh yeah, we've got vibrating pads, and we go, actually, you know, what happens if we're in the bathroom or I'm sitting watching TV, and it's just making hotels aware that they're, they're not doing everything that's, that's legally required, and if the fire, is, the fire alarm's ringing out, I can just be sitting there watching the telly, not knowing anything. Yeah.